Hello, today we are going to upgrade your fuel system and in this video I will show you how! Well, hello and welcome. Today we are going to upgrade your fuel system and your vacuum line. See the problem when you upgrade your scooter with the new jets, new air, filter, everything new, you upgrade, you want a more performance. At one point, uh, the tank and the padcock will be a little blocker for your fuel. So they will slow down your fuel. So at that point, you're going to have a little more starvation or hesitation on your scooter from the fuel. So at that point, you need to get a free flow of fuel to your carburetor. Because when you upgrade your scooter and you want to go faster, you need to have more juice and more flow to your carburetor. So to do that, you're going to need a few little things. A hose, clear hose, that is a 316 hose. Okay? You're going to need a nice filter that is going to give you a little more performance and a better flow of the fuel. And we are going to place a little switch because we are going to eliminate the pack of valve. The pack of valve that slow down your fuel going to your carburetor. So with this one that is a fuel switch, you will have a better flow to your carburetor. So let's do this right now. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to open up the seat right here. Right here, you're going to see the inside bucket of your scooter. Right here, we're going to remove the fuel cap. And you have one nut right here, one nut right here. Sometimes you have nuts down here or you have bolts down here. They're all 10 millimeter. So you get a 10 millimeter socket and you're going to remove them. So you're going to be able to remove this bucket away from your scooter. Now, right after you remove this bucket right here, make sure you place the cap back right here on the fuel tank because you don't want any fuel splash in your eyes. Okay, very important. Right after you've done that, you're able to see the inside of your scooter and what you can do, you're able to see a lot of things. Okay, right after you remove the inside of your scooter, at this point you, you should empty the fuel tank. If you're going to work with the fuel line, you should empty all the fuel that is inside your tank. It's a lot better. Now, what you're gonna find is gonna find the connection of the fuel tank that goes to your padcock, and it is down here, okay? Have something like that with a long nose right here, so you can put the little connection, the little hose that goes to the padcock from the tank, and you're gonna put it inside here. Place something right here on your CVT cover so nothing is gonna leak from the fuel hose to your CVT cover because sometimes the fuel it doesn't really go too good with the CVT cover and the CVT cover will fade on the color. So what you should do, put something on it. At this point you can remove the connection that goes from here to the tank, from the petcock to the tank and you're gonna put the connection right inside here. So at this point, you can let the fuel drain in this container until your tank is empty. Now, to make sure that the tank is not going to make a vacuum, open up the tank so the fuel will flow freely to your container. Right here, that's the fuel cap, put it on the side, okay? So let this one empty for about five minutes or more until the fuel is empty. Okay, right after you make sure the tank is empty, you're going to need a 20 inches clear hose. This one is a 316, and you can buy this one at Home Depot, or you can buy it online, or you can buy it on Amazon. I'm gonna put the link down here just in case you're gonna need the link to go buy this product. So this one is a 316 hose. Right here, make sure you put something on it or your scooter to make sure that just few drops of fuel is not going to go anywhere. So it's very important that you cover your scooter, you protect your scooter from the fuel. Because fuel, sometimes, many times inside, has products that will eat your paint or will damage your paint. So put something on right here that is old, that you don't need it anymore, a rag or something, to protect your scooter. Also protect your shocks right here, because right here, the fuel 
it might go inside your shock. At that point, the shock, they're going to get damage on the seal because the seal is made of rubber and the fuel doesn't really go too good with the rubber. So right here, you're going to have a 20 inches right here hose. So at this point, you can move right here the hose from down here. You just pull it, okay? Pull it hard. Okay, and it will come out. Now right here, you're going to have the hose. Just put the hose inside there. Now you might have a few drops of fuel coming out, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. What you can do, you can get the container of the fuel and you can drop this fuel that is coming out from the fuel hose right here. You can put it on a container or you're just going to drop it right here. Okay, if you just have a few drops, you can leak it on the towel that you have over here. Now, be careful with your eyes. Use eye protection, use gloves. You know, when you're working with your scooter, always protect yourself, okay? So, this one is a 20 inch clear hose. Many times I use clear hoses because you can see if sometimes there is sediment in the hose. You, f you can see if your fuel is flowing freely through the hose without removing a hose. So, having a clear hose has a lot of advantages, okay? A lot of help. Okay, right after you place this one here, just let it relax for a few seconds right here. Okay, down here at the nipple of your fuel tank, you can place a little zip tie right there. So this one is going to squeeze. It's going to squeeze the, the hose in there. Make sure you put the zip tight, nice and tight, okay? Now, try to pull a little bit with this plier, a little bit, so it's going to stay there and it's not going to move, okay? Okay, make sure you cut it and you break it, okay? Right here. At this point, when you put a little zip tight over there, you make sure that this one is firm and it's not going anywhere, okay? Hey, make sure it's nice and tight and make sure that this one goes up here, okay? Push up. Okay, right after you place it zip tight on this 20 inches hose, uh, you should put a good quality filter. This one is a great quality filter that you can place on your scooter, right here. And this one will help your scooter to clear the fuel when it goes down, okay? Now, on these filters, there is an arrow, okay? There is an arrow right here on the filter. That's where the flow of the... That's the, where the flow of the fuel should go, okay? There is an arrow that point down. So, this one should go the flow in the way of the fuel. So, make sure before you you know, you place this hose, uh, where are you going to place it? Because this one, the tank comes from here and it goes to your carburetor down here, okay? So make sure you put the hose right here. Here we are, nice and tightly, okay? You have to be nice and tightly. We're going to put a little zip tie right here, but that's how it has to be, okay? Nice and tight. Now we're gonna put a zip tie or you can place a little clamp, okay? But I love zip tight because uh, they're easy and they, they last a long time, you know? Right here. Nice, right here. Okay, make sure you pull it, okay? Now right here, cut the zip tie right here. Make sure this, this hose is nice and tight. And at this point, we can go on the other side, okay? So we can put this line on the other side. Go straight from here to the other side. Okay. Now later you're going to put this hose a little higher with a little zip tie right here. 
so you can connect it over here, okay? So it's not gonna bother anything. Make sure that the hose is not going to be too close to your shocks. If not, it's going to get squeezed by the shocks and might get damaged from the shock. So the hose has to be turning this way. Now later we're gonna put a zip tie up here so it's not going to move too close to the shocks. Okay, make sure at this point we're gonna put back the fuel cap right here so you're not going to lose it or any kind of fuel is gonna splash in your eyes even if there is no gas at this moment. Right here, we're going to get the whole hose right here. That's the old one, you just pull it out with the whole filter, okay? This one is the whole filter and that's the whole hose. You see, the, what they do, the hose is at one point, they become harder, they lose the flexibility and they are not too good and they start to lose uh, the fuel from this part right here because they, they become harder and they lose the power of uh, squeezing the filter right here. So at this point uh, we have these lines right here and it's the line that comes from the it's the line that comes from the tank. So we're gonna put a little zip tie right here later. Right here we have the hose. We're going to need a like a little bit of hose that is a 316 right here the filter this part right here this one about four inches so we can connect this one to the little switch that we're going to place that is a right here is a little switch that we're going to place and if you see there is on and off switch okay Okay, right here, that's the switch. You wanna have some extra hose, you know, cause you don't want this hose to be too much tight. You want this hose to be nice with a good flow. If you kind of bend the flow of the fuel, you're going to have a problem, okay? Cause you're gonna restrict, the, you're gonna restrict the flow of the fuel if you squeeze this hose. Right here, you're going to place this one right here but you want to place it downward so it's going to look down this part right here okay so right here and you can cut it okay right here we're going to cut this hose about three inches long only three four inches long okay you don't want to have this one too long from the filter to the switch to the fuel switch you don't really have one have this one really long Okay, make sure you cut it nice and straight, okay? Let's see. Beautiful, look at that. Okay, right after you cut this one, you're going to place the fuel switch. Right here. Fuel switch. Make sure. Right here. We put the fuel switch and you press inside, okay? press inside you want to make sure that this hose is gonna go all the way in okay we're gonna place a little zip tie right here and we're gonna place a zip tie right here now right here make sure you place a zip tie on this side right here okay nice and tight okay and a zip tie on the other side right here you want to make it nice and tight to make sure that nothing's going to leak away from this one. That's how you should have it, okay? Right there. Now make sure you pull it with the little plier or something. Okay, so it's going to squeeze the little hose right there. Okay, one. And this one too, make sure you pull this little zip tie and you cut it off because you want to do a perfect job okay perfect job is always better than a job is not well made okay right here now this see it's just perfect you know with this clear hose uh, you can see if something happening on the line okay it's very important because sometimes you don't see 
if the fuel flowing or not if you have a dark hose or black hose you're not going to see if the fuel is flowing or the fuel is dirty you know so with this one you have an idea what's happening okay without opening up anything because you don't have to open anything to see if the fuel is flowing or not Right after this one, we're going to remove the old padcock right here, valve, then it's no good anymore. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right here, that usually is always there, and you can remove it with a socket. But sometimes the little arm of the padcock valve is breaking, so what you have to do, you just have to replace with the something or replace the padcock or replace it with a little zip tie right there so you can connect this one right here okay but sometimes this part right here breaks if this one breaks you have a problem now right here we have two things we have the fuel hose that goes to your carburetor that you should be replacing that and place a better one that is nice and clear so at that point you're going to see if the fuel is going to your carburetor or not right up here in the center of the padcock you have uh, the vacuum line now you ask me what you should do with this one now there is two solutions that you can do with this one you can go down there at the at the manifold and reroute that little hose that is over there and put it on top of the carburetor or you just place a six millimeter bolt inside here and you close this one there is many ways that you can do that okay so place a little bolt right here you're going to close this hose you want to make sure that you close this hose pretty good with the plier right here get a, a right here a socket that is 10 millimeter to push this one in Okay, right after you've done this, you want to, right here, put this one here, okay? It's a little tight, a little clamp right here. So you want to tight this one really good, okay? You want to keep this one closed. Now, if you like, you can reroute everything and make a new connection from your padcock to your top side of your carburetor. That's the vacuum line. But if not, just place a bolt right here and you're going to close this hose. Now this one, you can tie it over here on a side. So it's not going to bother you too much, okay? So with a zip tie right here, we're going to tie this one. Now make sure you put the zip tie and you're gonna cut the end of the zip tie because you wanna do a great job, okay? Okay, right after we close the hose for the vacuum line, we need to find a way to put this one in a steady way that is not going to move. So you're going to need like a 10 millimeter bolt right here, so you can screw this one in. Get a little socket. You don't want this one to move, the little switch too much, okay? You want to be stable because when you open up or close this little switch, uh, you want this one to be stable. Make sure you pay attention to all the, all the little details. Make sure you keep this line nice and straight. Do not bend the line because if you bend the line, the fuel is not going to flow the right way. Make sure that this bolt is nice and tight because you want to turn this one, okay, when you want to turn the fuel on, but you don't want to turn the whole little switch, okay? Okay, look, this is perfect, okay? It's gonna have a nice flow. Now when you're going to turn this one on and off, you're just gonna go down here and you put this one on and off. This one, there is a fuel switch, it's a lot more reliable than a padcock because the padcock has a problem, then it leaks, okay? So when it leaks, it's gonna go inside 
the fuel is gonna go inside your carburetor. If it leaks a little more from your carburetor, the fuel is going to go inside your motor. From inside your motor, the fuel is going to go inside your cylinder. Inside your cylinder, when the motor is cold, uh, there is a little more gap between the cylinder and the piston. So, what's going to happen is that this fuel will go inside your motor, where is the oil. So that will not be so good for your scooter and all the gasket that you have inside your scooter. Because the fuel will eat all the gasket that you have inside your motor. So that's not a really good thing. Plus, many, many other things can happen when this fuel goes inside your motor. You know, you have a lot of more damage. Okay, right after you make sure this one is nice and tight. And make sure it's always half at this time, okay? You don't want to turn around. Okay, right after this one is nice and tight, you're able to remove this towel right here. Let's see, now we're gonna run the line from here, that is the new switch, fuel switch, from here to the carburetor. So what you're going to need is a line that is right here, and what you can do, you just take the measurement of this line right here, so you can have an idea on how much line you need to have. So let's do that. So let's measure this line right here that comes from the fuel petcock to the carburetor and this line is uh, 11 inches, okay? This one is 11 inches. Right here, that's how long is this one, 11 inches. We're going to have a new line right here that is made of clear hose. Now we're gonna attach this new line to the new fuel switch that is down here. Now this line right here is going to go at the carburetor. At the carburetor have a little clamp, like a little baby clamp right here. So you can use this clamp at the end at the carburetor of the hose. Right here, so this one will squeeze the hose at your carburetor. Okay, with this hose that you just attached to the new switch, right here to the new fuel switch. Okay, right now with the Okay, right now with the new hose that you attach to the fuel switch right here, you can go on the left side of the carburetor and connect this line on the left side of the carburetor. There is a little nipple that will be right here. Sometimes it's not too easy to find it, but you can twist the carburetor a little bit and you can find it. Or you can just go with the eye and see down there where is the nipple, okay? Try to remove some of these hoses and you can find the hose right here, okay? Okay, try to move a few things around to see if you can get your hands in there and you can go to put this hose right there. Now you want to make sure that this hose is not going to bother to anything, okay? You want to make sure that this hose has kind of like a free, you know? You want to take the measurement of this hose. You really don't want to make this hose go between things that are moving. It's really not too good, okay? So make sure you cut it the right length, you know, has to be, you know, like about 10 inches long, okay? But even when you put it back on, make sure that it doesn't go through anything that is going to squeeze the little tube, okay? You want to have the flow of the fuel go nice and smoothly. You don't want to bend any tubing, because if you bend the tubing at that point, uh, you're going to have a problem because the flow of the fuel is not going to flow freely. Okay, it's going to have a stop point at that point. Right here on the left side of the carburetor, you're going to see right here the nipple. That's where the carburetors connect to your fuel line. Okay, so you're going to make sure that the nipple right there is connected to the fuel line. And right here goes right here where is the little switch. Now right here the switch, don't forget, let's put a little zip tie or a little clamp so it's not going to leak. Right here, 
I'm gonna put a little zip tie right here to make sure that this one is not going to lick. Okay, okay. Make sure you pull it. Make sure you have a little, like a little plier that you can pull this little zip tie. And you break the little zip tie when you think the zip tie is in the right position, okay? Now make sure everything looks good. You don't want to have any leaks later from the fuel line, okay? Okay, right after you put the new fuel line in, you're able to put some fuel inside your tank. Remove this fuel cap and you can put some fuel right here. Now my suggestion is don't fill up the whole tank all the way because if you're going to have some problem in the fuel line you need to empty this fuel tank again so just put a little bit of fuel to test your scooter and see if the fuel line is not leaking after that you can put the rest of the gas in Make sure you close right here the fuel tank because you don't want anything splashing on your eyes, okay? Right after you've done that, you can open the fuel switch right here that you just place and you put this one on. If you don't see any fuel coming out, you can open this one because sometimes the cap makes a vacuum and doesn't let the fuel go on through the through the system okay right after you place the fuel in the tank you're able to turn this switch on and you can see some of the fuel going to the other side and going to the carburetor now try to turn your scooter on because uh, your carburetor needs to bring the full fuel down so that will help this little fuel switch to move because right now there is some air inside this tube down here make sure nothing is leaking over here or over here on all the connection too okay okay right after you place this one right here the switch now is your job every time that you use your scooter if you don't use for uh, like three four hour or one day you need to turn this switch 
off. Don't keep this one on all the time because this one will allow freely the fuel to go from the tank to your carburetor. So at the point if your carburetor is going to be overflowing of fuel and it's going to go inside the cylinder you're going to have a problem so every time you keep your scooter sitting more than five hours keep this one closed okay so this one is going to be a really good thing for your scooter because your scooter is going to work a lot better and a high performance okay so we just finished to upgrade your fuel system we only need few things to upgrade your system is a fuel switch that's very important a fuel line and a good fuel filter those are three things that you really need very easy thing to do now after you change your scooter and you upgrade your fuel system to a switch you need to remember every time you stop your scooter or you let your scooter sit more than five hours you really need to switch that switch to off because if not the fuel is going to keep flowing to your carburetor and your carburetor is going to overflow and all the extra fuel is going to go inside your motor and it's not going to be very good for your motor i'd like to thank you very much for watching my video i hope you enjoy click the like button feel free to ask any question at any time subscribe to my channel and thank you very much for watching my video